So the key when we're doing these rib on bridges is we want to adapt and bond the first contact that will hold that in place. Then we can contour the, the band or the rib on and then bond the second contact. So let me show you how we would do that. Hello, I'm Dr. Dennis Hartley with Dental Online Training, here with another from our video series of product reviews and clinical tips for the restorative dentist. Today we're going to be reviewing using Ribbond for the direct resin bonded bridge, what many people refer to as a Ribbond bridge. This is a classic clinical case where I'll use in the practice where I have a patient that's, say, congenitally missing a lateral incisor or missing another anterior tooth. What I want to share with you today is how to use the rib bond to make your bridges more predictable and more long lasting. All right, let's like let's take a look at our model and we'll get going with the case. All right, on our model, you'll see that I already have the neighboring teeth prepared and I've created this preparation in the central incisor from the distal. And there's likewise a preparation to make room for the ribbon bridge or the ribbon material in the canine area. Now, this is only necessary if you don't have occlusal space. You need at least a millimeter of space for the ribbon material. If the patient has an anterior open bite or the teeth were properly positioned for this bridge during braces, then you may not need to prep the teeth. But in a case where you have say a natural class one occlusion, we need to create the space so that we can protect the rib bond so it doesn't get exposed due to normal occlusal forces. All right, so we have our preparation already completed. We've placed adhesive on the model. In the mouth, of course, we would etch the tooth and place our adhesive. You'll also notice that I'm using Teflon tape to support or protect the pontic surface area. It's what we use when we do our course on the direct resin bonded bridge. So I'm just showing you as we're getting ready to place the ribbon material. If you're not familiar with ribbon, ribbon is a reinforced fiber material that is perfect for these type of bridges. The material comes in varying widths and varying thicknesses of materials. The material that I'm going to be using for the ribbon bridge is a two millimeter, the ultra thin material. I've removed it from the package. What's critical with this ribbon material is you don't want to touch it with your fingers until you place it into some sort of adhesive. So you need to use an unfilled resin adhesive with the ribbon material. And what I've done is I've placed the ribbon into a dappen dish and I've placed some of my just unfilled resin. You'd like to use an adhesive that does not have any primer in it. So you don't want to really use like a a seventh generation adhesive, like a universal adhesive, because it has primers in it and that can affect the bond strength with the ribbon material. You want to use just an unfilled resin material. So I've saturated my ribbon material with my unfilled adhesive, and then I'll use a dry gauze just to take off the excess adhesive. So I'll just dab the gauze or dab. I'll just dab the ribbon with the gauze to remove the excess adhesive. Now it's critical that we keep this away from the light. Otherwise it could start to cure now that it has adhesive on there. So I want to keep it somewhere where it's protected from the light as we get ready for the tooth procedure. For this particular case, the ribbon is already then pre-cut and selected for this tooth. For clinical cases, you have to measure and cut the ribbon appropriately prior to wanting to place the material. The mistake that I've seen clinicians make is that when they place their fiber reinforced material, in this case a rib bond, they'll bring the material straight across between the two uh, proximal teeth. And it'll sort of look like this when they place the material. The problem that you'll have if you, if you bond in your rib bond like that is that the rib bond will be too palatal and you won't be able to contain enough of the composite that's creating the pontic and I think you can get breaking off of your pontic from the ribbon because it's not supportive enough. And what I want to do is I want to create a curve almost a C form to the ribbon and then this way the ribbon will be sort of into the center of the pontic instead of being towards the palatal of the pontic. 
So if you could imagine that, I will use an instrument where I want to see the ribbon material come more into the body of the pontic like this. So the key when we're doing these ribbon bridges is we want to adapt and bond the first contact that will hold that in place. Then we can contour the, the band or the ribbon and then bond the second contact. So let me show you how we would do that. So I'll show you here with my flowable composite. This is just a hybrid flowable composite. I'm going to place the flowable composite both on the mesial and the distal contacts of the bridge. I'm going to take my ribbon and I'm going to seed it into that flowable composite. And for this step, I like to use a rounded blunt instrument to keep the ribbon seeded into that flowable composite. Now it's critical that you place a flowable composite first and seat the ribbon into that flowable composite. You don't want to place a ribbon and put the flowable composite over it because the ribbon has to be engaged into that flowable composite. So while I'm holding that ribbon in position with my blunt instrument, then my dental assistant would come and cure that zone. I want to be careful not to cure the entire ribbon strand because I want to make sure it's still flexible so I can manipulate it after I cure this contact. So holding the ribbon with my blunt instrument, seated into that flowable composite, and it will spot cure the distal contact. So in the mouth, I would have the dental assistant there to be able to cure the composite while I'm holding the ribbon in position. I would also then have a metal instrument that would be covering over the rest of the ribbon material to protect it from the curing light. I'm here by myself, so I'm not able to have the third hand to be able to do that. But in the mouth, I would be protecting that ribbon material while I am holding the ribbon into the distal proximal contact area. Then once that is spot cured, then I can then manipulate the ribbon to blend it so it forms more of a C form. So it brings it into the middle of the pontic zone instead of just towards the palatal. So creating this C in with the ribbon, well, if you can imagine your pontic being right here, it's going to be right central into the pontic. You can almost see from the ovate form that we've created in the tooth and into the soft tissue, you can see how this ribbon now is into the center of that ovate tooth form, which would then put it into the center of the pontic. In the mouth, this would again take two hands, one hand to support the matrix. And while I'm evaluating, it would take two hands again, one hand to support the ribbon now into the mesial abutment, the distal, the central incisor. And I may need another instrument to make sure that this ribbon stays above the soft tissue so I can keep it in the correct position and also make sure that it's out far enough buckly but not too far that it's going too far to the facial. And then supporting that, then my dental assistant can come in and now I'm not worried about curing the rest of the ribbon material. So I'm going to hold this in position with my blunt instrument and then it will cure the mesial abutment, the distal of the central incisor, to secure the ribbon. Once that ribbon is in a great position like that, then I can go and do a final cure on the ribbon, and I'm going to cure for 20 seconds, both on the mesial and on the distal portion. The final portion of securing the ribbon is to place a traditional composite, either a nanofill or a hybrid composite, over the ribbon at the preparation sites or where the ribbon is on the tooth structure. It's critical that all of the ribbon is sealed. If any of the fibers become exposed of the ribbon through chewing, mastication, just through their occlusion, that's going to create these fibers that are going to be very uncomfortable for the patient to their tongue. It will also start to create the degradation of the fiber and the bridge. So we want to make sure that all of the ribbon is protected 
uh, by using this composite over the surface. And again, I'm not worried about the ribbon that's in the middle area because we'll be placing our composite pontic, but where the ribbon goes into the tooth preparation, we want to make sure that is completely supported by our composite material. Once we have that in place, then we will like cure that, and we'll repeat the procedure for the distal over the canine preparation area. Again, taking a small ball of composite, and placing it over the ribbon, blending it over the tooth structure, but completely encapsulating the ribbon material. And once we have that composite in position and smooth, then we'll light cure. Once the composite is completely polymerized, let's take a look at the shape of our ribbon. We should see that the ribbon material is centered. in the middle of the pontic area, as we see from the ovate shape of the pontic soft tissue, that sets us up nicely so the pontic is completely supported by that rib bond right in the middle of the pontic. As we look from the facial view, we can see that our rib bond then is supported nicely, blended in, protected with our composite, and then it's just a matter of freehand building, or if you have some sort of template, building your Pontic that would go attached onto that ribbon that is positioned and cured. So if you're not familiar with ribbon, just check them out at ribbon.com, R-I-B-B-O-N-D.com, and they'll be able to give you the information on the various sizes and materials that they have available for splinting, periodontal splinting, making bridges, all sorts of uses. If you like this technique and you'd like to learn more, check us out at dothandson.com. That's dental online training dothandson.com, where we have our on-demand course where you can learn at your own pace or join us for our live virtual two-day workshop where we do this type of bridge and other techniques for these congenitally missing lateral incisors. So thanks for joining us. I hope you found this content valuable for you and your restorative practice. And look forward to other clinical tips and product reviews from Dental Online Training. Yours for Better Dentistry. I'm Dr. Dennis Hartley.